2023 has really kicked into gear now and as I promised you guys, the schedule series of me doing essentials, the top 10 songs, the worst of best and any other extra lists that I can throw in there as well is back every single Sunday and we are starting with quite a big one. Five essential psychedelic pop albums. In my opinion, these are what I think are absolutely essential for you to kind of get into the genre or maybe even something that you just want to explore. You have heard bits of it before, but you want to go for some real big meaty ones. Well, here are five. And as always, as I do before these videos, please check out my Patreon. You can get your say on these videos in the future if you would like to support me on there. Just look, look at the different tiers that you can get. Uh, and yeah, you're supporting me and you're getting your own say on what videos can come next in these series. So there you go. Psychedelic pop then, a genre that really birthed from the 1960s, of course, we had some super famous bands that we will get to in this video that really helped usher it along through its really surreal and abstract ideas with the lyrics and the sounds and the acidy sounds as well, the druggy sounds that were probably birthed on the artists themselves doing a lot of drugs, probably, let's be honest. And it became one of the most acclaimed and beloved musical genres by music nerds, critics, and, you know, considering one of the most famous bands of all time did dabble in this genre and help usher it into the mainstream, maybe masses all over the world even love this too. Although in the modern day, it does feel like a very music nerd genre, but it's mad to think that some really, really huge acts in its heyday were really, really trailblazing this style of music, but it has kind of dipped and come back and dipped and come back over the years. And we have seen a bit of a revival in the 2010s actually, and we are seeing more um, bands that are pushing this sound again, re revitalizing it from way back in the day and are seeing some success from it as well. I mean, I'm not gonna mention these in my f list of five, but bands like Temples or bands like King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard, they have certainly seen some, some success over revitalizing this style of music. So there's definitely still an audience for it. Perhaps it's the nostalgia geeks, the kids that are doing a lot of drugs themselves, maybe, that wanna hear this style of music again, or perhaps it's just a cycle that we see with all kinds of genres. We always see it with all kinds of music. We've seen a lot of 80s boom in the past few years in pop music as well. We kind of just want to keep reliving the past and genres will keep coming back. And psychedelic pop is certainly in that category as well. So here are five that I think are essential. Obviously you may have a different five, so please let me know in the comments if you do and you agree or disagree with my picks. These are just what I think. I like to throw in ones that might not get talked about as much, some different ones that aren't necessarily part of the conversation. But alongside that, I have to start with a biggie, of course. It's gonna have to be one of the big ones. And you're making me feel like I've never been born. Of course, it had to begin with the Beatles, and it really couldn't have began anywhere else for this style of music. And you're probably thinking to yourself, well, I'd have gone with this one, I'd have gone with that one. And to be fair, each to their own with whatever you pick for the Beatles in this kind of category, because there's quite a few of their albums that you could throw in. You could throw in Sgt. Pepper's and it would make sense. But for my own personal taste, Revolver is the best out of these albums that they were really dabbling in this sound for me. I think, aside from the elephant in the room, that is a yellow submarine. I do not endorse or condone that behavior, but the rest of this album is pretty damn good. I mean, tracks like Eleanor Rigby really, really have had a huge influence on music for forever really. But of course, the melodies and what they were able to achieve with the instrumentation and the incredibly unique sound for its time with this album is just to, to behold, really. It is just a massive musical achievement. And it's so clear as to why the Beatles have been heralded for as long as they have. I know there's a conversation about whether they're overrated, underrated, and blah, 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 blah. I mean, anyone saying they're underrated is just bizarre, but there's a bit of a debate these days about how their music still stands today, because what they were doing was, you know, 
so many years ago now that perhaps it may be dated and things like that but i don't think it is i think listening to listening to tracks like taxman or even the final track which feels like a, its own insular sound compared to the rest of the album i mean what they were doing on that final track just sounds so incredible for its time and you can't even shy away from its very short-term influence because you've got bands like the Beach Boys who of course were also dabbling in this style of music maybe a bit of a bonus one for you there because they're not going to be in this list of five actually which may be a bit cheeky of me not to include them but also bands like the Millennium as well I mean listen to their albums around that time you cannot tell me that they weren't at least a little bit maybe quite a lot actually inspired by what the beatles were doing because it is just so creative and it's done in such a unique way and it adds to the pop sounds that they were doing in their early days and it just kind of adds layers upon layers of, on what they were doing and revolver is quite the musical achievement and it's hard not to include it on this list or really any list to be honest We're going completely different next though. I did just mention the Beach Boys, but we know how much influence they have had on Animal Collective and perhaps even this um, album as well. The vocal harmonies are so Brian Wilson throughout this album and many of their albums too. And what I like about this album, juxtaposing it with Revolver, is how different they sound. And it's really just too entities in the psychedelic pop realm to be honest because they offer so many different qualities to the genre and yet they're both equally as essential as one another i think uh, merryweather post pavilion is much more on the surrealist side of things i mean the jaggedy rhythms the weird little details added to the instrumentation the reverb which the album is just absolutely soaked in at times is just to behold uh, again it's one of those albums that you just hear and you just think i'm not really sure what i'm quite hearing and i'm not entirely sure if i've ever really heard anything quite like it there's a sunshine element to it absolutely as well the track summertime girls is a real big bop to be honest and tracks like my girls as well just have really dizzying quality to it that just makes the psychedelic really really stand out with an album like this yeah i had to mention animal collective i think what they've done musically over the years has been heralded by the people that know who they are but in the grander scheme of like the musical world not really that many people know about them it's really very insular to the internet when you think about it you would never talk to anyone in real life about animal collective no one is going to be there to talk about them but there is that buzz for them on online communities and to be quite frank the way that this album shifted sound in such an interesting way has to be mentioned for this list <laughs> And we're going for even something perhaps possibly considered even more obscure next with Midair Thief. Um, this album, Crumbling, is a revelation <laughs> for me. This album, man, has one of the most unique sound palettes to it I think I may have ever heard in music. This band here, this really, really underrated band in the grand scheme of things as well, crafted such a unique sounding album this album for me is so positive sounding it's so uplifting it's so colorful it's vibrant and you couldn't necessarily just pigeonhole it into the psychedelic pop genre it brings to the table more than just that but i think the overall sentiment the overall feelings that you get listening to um, tracks like these chains there is that psychedelic feeling to it it's not quite as dizzying and as abrasive as perhaps something like animal collective but the sort of sunshiny elements really give every track such a positive uplifting sound which i absolutely love the way they utilize the vocals with the instrumentals is just so perfectly done this for me is one of the best of this genre and it only came out a few years ago so it is kind of proving that even though we're years beyond the peak days of a style of music that it's not exactly you know meaning that the genre is totally over and totally done because bands like this prove that it can be done in such a great way and this album for me is absolutely phenomenal <laughs> 
We have to go back to a classic now though, The Flaming Lips. Very similar to some of the other artists I've mentioned in this video so far, you could name a few different albums. And I'm sure many people would probably be thinking The Soft Bulletin, but no, for me, Yoshimi is my, is my guy. Yoshimi is my guy. And the title track part one, I just love so much. I think the way the vocals are so charming and boyish really adds to the overall sentiment of the style that they're going for here. And it might be the most psychedelic pop through and through album on this entire list, to be honest, because they just do not at any point shy away from it. You know, some of the other albums you can go, oh, they're dabbling in this, they're dabbling in that. This album just right from the get go is pure psych pop. Everything you'd expect from the style of music is just all over this album. The trippy instrumentals, the kind of addictive qualities of the the way the melodies kind of intertwine and the catchy hooks as well, the sunshiny moments, it's just got it all. And I think Flaming Lips really, really peaked at the top of this musical genre with this album, to be quite honest with you. I think it's absolutely brilliant. And again, you could probably say a few of their albums could easily make it onto this list, but I think Yoshimi has it all. Uh, do you realize what a song that is as well? And we're ending on something a little bit strange, perhaps. I think Unknown Mortal Orchestra, Multi Love, is on, on the essentials for psychedelic pop. I really do. And I don't think it would be the first five that many other people would name. But this is what I was saying. I want to try and bring something different to these videos. I want to mention albums that are a little bit different, not necessarily ones that always get mentioned. Because this, for me, is one of the most underrated albums of possibly the past 10 years. I think Multi Love was really hard done to. And I think at the time, given how huge Tame Impala were getting and how much success they had off their Currents album. Another bonus one for you, by the way, I think Currents is certainly worthy of being mentioned in this conversation. They just kind of fell down to the bottom of the pecking order. It was so hard to keep up with Tame Impala. Tame Impala have become that guy for people who only listen to one genre, except I do like Tame Impala as well. They've become a bit of a meme, you know that, on the internet. And I think it's hard to compete with that. And I think Unmano Mortal Orchestra, as much as I do like Tame Impala and how they have grown on me over the years, particularly the slow rush that has grown on me too, I actually think UMO did a better job than Tame Impala have on across their whole albums, to be honest. I think from start to end, it's really concise. Everything about this album is really memorable and catchy, and there isn't a miss on the whole thing. I think the title track is a fantastic little pop tune. The drumming on that track is fantastic as well. And I think across the whole thing, the sort of psychedelic arrangements just are super memorable. The hooks get stuck in your head. They are so bubblegummy in that sense, which is quite a rare thing to describe psych pop as. Usually you wouldn't quite say it's bubblegum, but they kind of do border on that side of things and every track is just so catchy. The whole thing for me is just like a fresh glass of tropical juice on a really hot day in maybe Gran Canaria or friggin' Spain or Greece. I've never even been to Greece, but I'm gonna pretend that I have just for this reference here. You know, I think the whole thing is just so joyous and summery, the whole thing. And I think for psychedelic pop, similar to Flaming Lips, that summery feel is exactly what you want from the genre. And I think UMO have to be a, a, an essential for this genre of music. So there we go, that's five essential albums for psychedelic pop for you, along with all the bloody extra bonus ones I threw in there as well throughout this video. So there you go, you've got more than enough albums for this genre if you are wanting to get into it, if you're wanting to try more, if you want to dabble into different things, if you've heard quite some famous ones already but you weren't sure where, sure where to go next, well there you go, I've given you plenty of recommendations in this video and I'd love to see what you guys think in the comments as well. If you agree with my picks, if you disagree, if you're passionately against what I picked or if you're passionately for what I picked, please let me know. And please let me know what you would go for as well. What would be, what would be the five picks for you? And if you've not listened to any of these, you check them out, 
please let me know as well. I always love seeing people go, wow, what a great recommendation. This was really cool. Thanks for mentioning it. It's always great to see. So please do all of that in the comments. Subscribe, check out my Patreon as well. That'd be wonderful. Have a good day and goodbye.